doctors we are live now you can take the session good morning friends and welcome once more to this brain teaser season 3 episode 8 this is going to be the last episode of season it is our signature so once more good morning friends welcome to this eighth and last episode of brain teasers in this season 3 in this month of april well friends do you know what does the word april mean yes it is derived from a latin word aperai which means to open or apricus which means sunny which is an allusion to its being the season when trees and flowers begin to open april is also seen as the month of sun and the growth in northern hemisphere april is associated with spring time new beginnings and a time to bloom like the flowers and the trees it's a time to start fresh and shed those cool weather layers well april's birthstone is diamond birth flower is daisy for us as a medical professionals the month of april has certain health issues health related days the 7th of april is celebrated as world health day 10th of april is celebrated as world homeopathy day and 11th is celebrated as national safe motherhood day for us as an ophthalmologist the month of april has sports eye safety month and women's eye and health safety month well friends did you note the twist in today's show well yes today we have participants who were the winners of our previous episodes and now are our quiz masters for today's episode dr s shail jabhat was the winner of episode in season 2 she is a ace vitreo retinal surgeon trained from shankanetrale chennai and is now an associate professor at kasturba medical college manipal hospital and herself an avid quiz master from karnataka welcome ma'am Dr Prashob Mohan was the winner of our two episodes one in season 2 and one in season 3 he is also a trained cornea surgeon from RIO Bangalore and now a cornea surgeon at Chaitanya Hospital at Trivandrum he is also an avid quiz master from Trivandrum Kerala in fact last week only he conducted quiz for KOS that is Kerala Ophthalmological Society and now the youngest amongst all is Dr Uday Tech Chandani who was the finalist of our all india post graduate quiz which we had in last summers he also has to his credit multiple quizzes in his kitty that is he has won the aios quiz eurodio quiz and right now he is doing pursuing his mch in vitro retina from the prestigious post graduate institute at pgi chandigarh today we have a world acclaimed glaucoma surgeon dr sushmita kaushik who is a professor at pgi chandigarh as our guest to deliver pearls in glaucoma welcome ma'am well friends all these big shows and big prizes are not possible without the generous support of our trade partners team brain teasers is indebted to mr ashokan executive vice president and mr navneet from microvision for being steadfastly with us and last but not the least let me introduce you to the backbone of brain teasers dr shilpi he who is also our co-host my special thanks to numerotech team headed by mr sai for being technical for his technical support and conducting the session seamlessly episode after episode now i request dr shilpi to familiarize the participants with the rules for the day share me good morning friends and welcome back so let me familiarize all of you with the rules of today's quiz yes who can participate all the ophthalmologists from pgs to practitioners session we have five sections 
with five questions in each section. The format will be for section one to four, it is a MCQ based pattern. And for per question, you will get 20 seconds to answer. In the section five, it will be a rapid fire round. It will contain five questions and you need to answer those five questions in 30 seconds. And that rapid fire round will be the face to face round. This is for the MCQ round, what the participants will see on their screen. This is a sample question. After the question is asked and the options are spoken out, you need to register your answer after the timer starts. After the timer starts, you need to press the correct option, which is B here, like this. After pressing the option, you also need to press the save button to register your answer. If you do not press the save button, your answer will not be registered. Assessment for section 1 to 4 will be depending upon the correct response and the fastest finger first. For section 5, it is a qualifying round for the rapid fire round. The section toppers of all the, all the sections will automatically qualify for the rapid fire round. And besides that, we will have the three toppers who will be the cumulative performance of all the four sections. But just remember, if you are a section topper for one section, keep playing for the rest of the sections so that you can qualify for the final uh, prizes. Winners, we will have total five win winners which will be the cumulative performance of all the five sections, including the four sections of the MCQ and the respective rapid fire round. In case there is a tie, three questions will be asked and contestant with the maximum correct answer will qualify for the respective prize. Finally, judges and host decision will be binding for everyone. Now let's see what are the prizes. The fifth winner will carry away 1500 gift voucher and in the ascending order, it will be 2000 rupees, 2500 rupees, 4000 rupees, and the winner will carry away 5000 rupees gift voucher. So, all the section winners and the three cumulative performers, you will be invited to come live for the rapid fire round. You will be sent a Zoom link and we will permit you to join the platform live. So, keep your registered mobile on as you will get a call from us. And you need to log in so that you can play the rapid fire round face to face. Now I invite our youngest quiz master today, Dr. Uday Tek Chandani from PGI Chandigarh. He is currently pursuing his MCH in Vitrio Retina as a fellow at PGI Chandigarh. He was the finalist at Eurodio 2017, AIOC Quiz 2019. He was runner up for iFocus Quiz 2019. Brain Teaser was June 2020, and he was the winner for the Chandigarh Ophthalmic Society PG Quiz 2017, North Zone Ophthalmic Society Quiz 2018, Eurodia Quiz 2018, and Brain Teaser Quiz August 2020. So friends, beware, he's a avid quiz master also, so he knows how to question. So over to you, Uday. Morning. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Please do. Yeah, is my screen visible? Am I audible? Yes. Ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the kind introduction. So I'll start with section one. So this is my first question. We have an eight-year-old male child who presented with a right eye squint since two years. The left eye and the family screening is normal clinically as well as an angiogram. The image on the left side is the clinical fundus photo of the patient and on the right side is the mid-phase angiogram. So what is the most likely diagnosis of this patient? Is it option A, Coach disease? Is it option B, familial exudative vitroretinopathy? Is it option C, toxocariasis? Or is it option D, retinoblastoma? Your time starts now. Uh, 
all right so the correct answer is a coach disease so coach disease is characterized by extensive exudation and dilated telangiectasia ch- blood vessel it usually affects males and is unilateral and is non hereditary in nature so coming to my second question we have a 76 year old male who presents with no light perception in the right eye since 5 days and no light perception in the left eye since 1 day we can see the fundus photos of both the eye and this is his right sided facial photo showing some significant features so what is the most likely diagnosis of this elderly gentleman is it option a optic neuritis is it b non arthritic aion is it c arthritic aion or is it d malignant infiltration of the optic nerve your time starts now all right time's up and the answer for this question is arthritic aon so arthritic aon affects elderly individuals and it affects males more than females it presents with only light perception or no light perception with subsequent eye involvement over a matter of a few days the characteristic feature of this patient was pallid disc edema with a visible uh, temporal artery as well and these patients have associated features of jaw claudication and headache classically they will complain of pain while combing their hair so this is my third question so we have a preterm newborn who has a period of gestation of 27 weeks and a birth weight of 900 g he is presented at an age of 5 weeks and he has a history of nicu stay with oxygen supplementation as well what is the diagnosis as per the most recent icrop classification number 3 is it aggressive posterior retinopathy of prematurity zone 1 is it aggressive posterior retinopathy of prematurity posterior zone 2 is it aggressive retinopathy of prematurity zone 1 or is it stage 4 ro your time starts now see the vessels in this patient getting very limited up to here close to all right so the answer to this question is aggressive retinopathy of prematurity zone 1 so in the recent icrop classification the aggressive retino uh, progress aprop has been replaced by arop and this is one of the contributions of indian ophthalmologists to literature it replaces aprop because in our countries and in others we see more severe diseases in larger preterm infants so hence the importance of this terminology coming to my next question we have a 30 year old male who presents with sudden onset rapidly progressive diminution of vision in the left eye since 10 days he gives a history of retinal detachment in the father but there is no history of trauma the image on the up is the left side fundus image where we can see these retinal breaks in the retinal detachment but the diagnosis is based on the other eye where we can see some very classical findings so what is the most likely diagnosis of this patient is it a stickler syndrome is it b wagner syndrome is it c goldman power syndrome or is it d pigmented parvovirus colorectal atrophy your time starts now the clincher is in the right eye fundus photo all right so the answer to this question is stickler syndrome so if we see in this patient he has a very classic perivascular radial lattice in the right eye which is very characteristic of stickler syndrome and it is an autosomal dominant inheritance hence the history of retinal detachment in the father as well so coming to my last question which is a little off beat we have these two renowned ophthalmologists the first one is an indian living legend who is considered by most of us as a father for us in retinal surgery and the other is a very elegant lady so there is one disease which has a classification given by each of these two stalwarts in ophthalmology what is this disease is it fevr 
is it coach disease is it retinoblastoma or is it fundal coloboma your time starts now all right so the answer to this question is fundal coloboma so these two individuals is dr lingam gopal and dr idaman and they have given classifications of fundal coloboma originally it was given by dr idaman but there is a relatively newer classification by dr lingam gopal so i'd like to introduce my next quiz master which is dr s shelja ma'am who is currently an associate professor and a vitoretinal consultant at kasturba medical college in manipal she has done her surgical vitoretinal fellowship from shankar netrale chennai and has keen interest in retinal vascular disorders retinal imaging and endophthalmic along with 30 international publications i hand over to you ma'am to take over thank you thank you dr duday for the introduction and uh, thanks to dr prashant bhavan kule sir and his team for this opportunity uh, i'll just share my screen uh, even am on a sunday yeah. first sunday of the month is always the time to tune in to brain teasers but this time for a change instead of answering the questions we will be asking the questions so once again thank you prashant bhavan kule sir and team and uh, i would like to start off the section 2 the first question is which of the following is not true regarding this condition and your options are c nocturnal hypotension may play a role in the etiopathogenesis option b dyschromatopsia out of proportion to the vision loss option c how did optic disc with small or absent physiological cup and option d sectoral disc edema may be seen and your time starts now let's see what is the right answer the correct answer is dyschromatopsia out of proportion to the vision loss is not seen in aion or anterior ischemic optic neuropathy dyschromatopsia in aion is proportional to the vision loss in contrast to optic neuritis in which the color vision may be severely affected with reasonably good visual acuity sudden painless vision loss which is discovered on waking up in the morning is uh, seen suggesting a role of nocturnal hypotension altitudinal field defects diffuse or sectoral disc swelling with a few peripapillary splinter hemorrhages as well as crowded optic disc which is a risk factor for aion moving on to the second question worsening of the vision and other symptoms on exercise or increase in the body temperature is known as is it a lehermit sign b redox phenomenon c kolfrits phenomenon or d kolfs phenomenon and the time starts now let's see the answer the answer is it's d kolfs phenomenon so worsening of the vision and other symptoms on exercise or increase in the body temperature is called as utoffs phenomenon which is seen in multiple sclerosis lehermit sign which is also seen in multiple sclerosis and transverse myelitis it refers to the electrical sensation on flexion of the neck whereas redox phenomenon is the perception of the moving targets in the blind visual field which is seen in occipital lobulations and pulfrix phenomenon refers to two dimensional objects being perceived as three dimensional the next question third one of the section 
how many hues are tested in Fransworth Munsell 100 hue test? And the options are A, 100, B, 85, C, 15, or D, C. And the time starts. <laughs> Correct answer is 85. So the Fransworth Pencil 100 U test is a sensitive but more time taking test which can detect both congenital and acquired color defects. Despite its name, it has 85 caps of different hues which are arranged in four racks and the patient is asked to arrange the randomized caps in the order of color progression and the results are plotted on a circular chart. The fourth question, this condition is a side effect of which drug? Is it A, amiodarone, B, rifabricin, C, tamoxifen, or D, vancomycin? And the time starts. <laughs> Answer is C. Tamoxifen, which is an anti-estrogen drug used in the treatment of breast carcinoma. This leads to crystalline maculopathy with bilateral fine yellow deposits seen in the inner layers of the retina. Rarely, it can also cause optic neuropathy, but it is reversible on stopping the treatment. There are other drugs which can also lead to crystalline maculopathy like canthazanthin, methoxyflurane, etc., Coming to the other drugs which are given as options, amiodarone causes vertex keratopathy and optic neuropathy, whereas rifabutin leads to acute anterior uveitis associated with hypopion, and vancomycin used intravitreally can sometimes lead to hemorrhagic occlusive retinal vasculitis. Coming to the last question of this section, the following FFA picture is due to is it a blocked fluorescence by the lipofusin? Is it B, hyperfluorescence due to the loss of RPE? Is it C, hyperfluorescence due to capillary non-perfusion due to loss of choreocapillaries? Or is it D, hyperfluorescence due to the blockage by the melanin in the RPE? And the time starts now. <laughs> The correct answer is blocked fluorescence by the lipofusin. The characteristic picture of silent choroid or dark choroid, which is seen in Stagart's disease or fundus flavimaculatus, that is due to the lipofusin, which is accumulated in the RPE cells, causing the masking of the underlying choroidal fluorescence. So with that, we come to the end of the section two of this brain teasers episode. And I take this opportunity to introduce my co-host who himself is an avid quizzer and a quiz master, very talented quiz master, Dr. Prashob Mohan. Dr. Prashob has done his MS ophthalmology from RIO Tiruvananthapuram and fellowship in cornea and external eye diseases from RIO Bengaluru. After that, he has worked as consultant in cornea refractive surgery in several tertiary eye care centers in Kerala. Currently is working as consultant cornea and refractive surgery at Chaitanya Eye Hospital and Research Institute, Tiruvananthapuram, and is the medical director of Ananta Eye Bank. Apart from this, he has participated and won several state, national, and international level quiz competitions. The list of his achievements is really long, so I'm just going to read a few important ones. That's the winner of the Sark Academy of Ophthalmology in December 2021, Cornea Society Caracon 2018, 19, 20, 21, Karnataka Ophthalmic Society in 2021, AIOS 2021, and he's also been qualified among the top 100 for the final round of the national level quiz in Eurodio 2011. 
So with that introduction, I would like to call upon Dr. Prashob to conduct the next part of the quiz. I'm sure we are going to have a very exciting round of quiz. Yeah, I have a pleasant duty to do. We have section one webinar till uh, Prashob takes over, shares his screen. And it is Dr. Hitisha Mittal from Chandigarh. Congratulations, Dr. Hitisha. So be ready to join us on a Zoom platform at the conclusion of rapid, uh, this MCQ round. Congratulations once more. Over to you, Prashob. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Dr. Prashant and Dr. Shilpi and the whole team of Brain Teasers for uh, inviting me uh, as a master in this week. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. And I have always enjoyed uh, the Brain Teasers quiz, and I hope you will enjoy it too. Without uh, wasting much time, I think I will move on to the questions. It will be the section three. And the first question of section three will be as follows. Which of the following is not associated with Down syndrome? Your options are option A, limited elevation in reduction, down shoot in reduction, B, presence of A pattern, or D, hypertropia in primary position. Your time starts now. that we come to the end of the 20 seconds and the right answer is presence of a pattern this is one of the features that is used to distinguish between brown syndrome and its mimicker the inferior oblique palsy brown syndrome is usually associated with the b pattern compared to inferior oblique palsy which has an a pattern as a result, uh, this uh, the brown syndrome results from the limitation of the normal function of the oblique tendon trochlea component and can be congenital or acquired. The various symptoms include diplopia, poor binocular vision or stereopsis, orbital pain and tenderness, pain on eye movement and abnormal head posture along with sometimes you can get, hear a click uh, when uh, the eye, when you attempt, the patient attempts to move the eye uh, uh, in, in elevation and adduction. The signs are limited elevation and adduction, downshoot in adduction, Severe cases, hypotropia in primary case, severe cases, in a position of the head, head turn away from the side of lesion, a positive force duction test, and a tendon or cyst, tendon cyst or mass palpable in the uh, supranasal op. We'll move on to the next question, the second question of the section. And which of the following condition is this map most consistent? Option A, keratoconus. Option B, pellucid marginal degeneration. Option C, postlastic ectasia. Or option D, post intact. Your time starts now. That's the end of your time. The right answer is pellucid marginal degeneration. As you can see, this is a pachymetric map, and the characteristic shape of the map is a bell shaped map. You can see the inferior band of thinning. And in PMD, the ideal uh, pachymetric map is obtained when you open it up up to the 12 full 12. With that, we move to the next question. Question B. Which of the following is not associated with this condition? Please look at the image and tell me which of the following conditions is not associated. A, basal encephalocele. B, Moya Moya disease. C, agenesis of corpus callosum. Or D, face syndrome. The time starts now. <laughs> The end of the time, and the right answer is agenesis of corpus callosum. 
Now, why is this answer? Agencies of corpus callosum is associated with absent septum pellucidum along with optic nerve hypoplasia in another syndrome called Demoriseus syndrome. And the picture that you saw was of a morning glory anomaly. The rare congenital mal mal malformation of the optic nerve. And when it is associated with systemic signs and symptoms, it is called as morning glory syndrome. Systemic associations include basal encephalosy, hypnotic features, and moya moya disease, which is hypoplasia of the cerebral arteries, along with face syndrome, that's posterior fossa malformation, large facial hemangioma, arterial anomalies, cardiac anomalies, and eye anomalies, and neurofibromatosis. That we come to the next question. And look at this figure. It's obviously a picture of a sturm sconoid, and please identify the true statement among the following. At point B, A, at point B, the horizontal rays have come to a focus while the vertical rays are converging. B, at point D, the vertical rays are diverging. C, at point F, the horizontal rays have come to a focus while the vertical rays are converging. And D, both vertical and horizontal rays have come to a focus at point. The time starts now. To identify the true state. And the time is up. The right answer is point B, the vertical rays are diverged. Now, as you know, Sturm Sconard is the configuration of rays attracted to a toric surface. And if you know your optics well, would know that C is the circle of least confusion, where there is divergence of the vertical rays and the convergence of the horizontal rays are equal, and the distance between B and F is known as the focal interval of star. Come to the ne next question, which is also the last question of this section. Look at this picture and tell me what is this patient likely to benefit from? A. Peripheral organ iridoplasty. B. Selective laser trabeculoplasty, argon laser trabeculoplasty, or D, pan retinal photocoagulation. Your time starts now. of the time, right answer is pan retinal photocoagulation. Picture that you see is that of a neovascular glaucoma with new blood vessels in the eye. Obviously, the treatment of choice is pan retinal photocoagulation. And there are three stages of neovascular glaucoma, pupiosis iridis, secondary open angle glaucoma, and angle closure. With that, I come to the end of this uh, section three, and we will be going with his master, uh, Dr. Uday, take the next panel. Uday, please take over. Till Uday shares his screen, we have the second sec section two winner that is going to be Dr. Nikita Gupta from Chandigarh. Why do I see suddenly a surge from all people from Chandigarh? Welcome. Congratulations, Nikita. So do rem remember to join us at the conclusion of this uh, section, uh, four sections. Okay. Fine. Over to you, Uday. Uh, welcome back, everyone. So coming to section four, it's going to be predominantly based on something I consider very dear, which is imaging. So this is my first question. What is the diagnosis of this patient? We can see a B scan on the top with the corresponding A scan below. Is it a circumscribed choroidal hemangioma? Is it a choroidal melanoma? Is it a choroidal osteoma? Or is it a diffuse choroidal hemangioma? Your time starts now. So the correct answer for this patient is a choroidal melanoma. As we can see, we can see a high spike at the tip of this lesion with the uh, acoustic hollow in the center, the presence of an angle kappa on the A scan, which is a progressively 
uh, reduced uh, spike in the A scan. So we can see choroidal excavation as well as posterior. So this is a case of a choroidal melanoma. Coming to my next question, what is the management of choice of a patient with this B scan? We can see the circular lesion in the posterior segment with this hyper intense lesion in the center. So what is this lesion and what is the management of choice? Is it A, oral albendazole? Is it B, oral steroids? Is it C, surgical excision in total? Or is it past on a vitrectomy with surgical room? Your time starts now. Okay, so the answer to this question is passed on a vitrectomy with surgical removal. So this is the case of intraocular cysticercosis, where we can see the cyst wall on the outside and this presence of this hyperintense colex in the center. As compared to orbital cysticercosis, where the treatment is actually medical with oral albendazole and steroid. So this is my third question, which is a 32-year-old male patient who is history of starting oral topiramate since four days for alcohol withdrawal. And this patient presented with right eye diminution of vision associated with pain since one day. The intraocular pressure was 42. You can see the peripheral and anterior chamber depth is shallow. The gonoscopy shows close angles. And this is the ultrasound biomicroscopy shows something going on with the ciliary body region. So what is contraindicated in this patient? Is it A, stopping the offending drug? Is it B, giving the patient oral and topical steroids? Is it C, performing a laser iridotomy? Or is it D, giving the patient topical cyclopalagia? Your time starts now. All right. The answer to this question is performing a laser iridotomy. So this is a case of drug-induced secondary angle closure glaucoma, where we can see this presence of this supraciliary effusion. So these patients require stopping of the offending agents and giving them steroids to reduce the inflammation. Giving them topical cycloplegics helps to push the lens iris diaphragm backwards, similar to in case of malignant glaucoma. Performing a laser iridotomy in these patients will actually aggravate the inflammation and enhance the angle closure. Coming to my next question, this is the OCT of a patient. And the question is, which of the following is not a subjective test to confirm the following result? Is it A, a Watsky-Allen test? Is it B, a laser spot test? Is it C, visual fields? Or is it D, that all of the following three are subjective tests? Your time starts now. Time is up, and this question was a trick on words, and the answer is a laser spot test. So this is a case of full thickness macular hole. The watsky allen test, as we know, is a test in which we clinically pass a small slit of light on the hole and ask the patient whether he can see a demarcation within it. Visual fields, especially 10-2 fields, will show us a scotoma. And it's actually a laser beam test and not a laser spot test to look at a full thickness macular hole. We only pass the aiming beam of the laser in the center and ask the patient if they can see it. We are not supposed to fire the laser or a spot on the forehead. So coming to my next question, we have a 30-year-old female who presented with bilateral gradually progressive diminution of vision since two months. She is given history of treatment with a systemic steroids, but there is no improvement. You can see this is the right and the left eye fundus photo. And this is the MRI of the patient. What is the most likely diagnosis? Is it A, non-specific orbital inflammatory disease? Is it optic neuritis? Is it VKH syndrome? Or is it uveal effusion syndrome? Your time starts now. So 
the correct answer to this is a case of juvenile effusion syndrome. If you see in this patient, there's presence of this ciliocoroidal detachment in the periphery. And on the MRI, we can see the thickened sclera, which is very characteristic of juvenile effusion syndrome. So I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Prashant sir to take over from here and thank him for the opportunity. Today you have done a great justice. Good. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. So before I uh, introduce Dr. Sushmita Kaushik, who is going to be the guest of our honor to deliver the pearl on glaucoma, I have a pleasant task of involving introducing the section three winner and it is Dr. Basit Ali from Bhavanagar, Gujarat. Congratulations, Dr. Basit Ali. Be ready to join the Zoom platform immediately after this uh, 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 pearl of the month. You will be sent an invite, please do join. So now it's my pleasant duty and a privilege to introduce Dr. Sushmita Kaushik who is a professor in PGI Chandigarh. She has done her training from Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi, and a senior residency and research officer uh, at PGI Chandigarh. Her affiliations are, uh, she is with Glaucoma Services Advanced Eye Center. Her research interests are multiple, newer diagnostic tools, childhood glaucoma, angle closure, and glaucoma surgeries. To her credit are more than 140 publications, contributed 46 chapters to various textbooks, authored education module on primary congenital glaucoma for World Glaucoma Association. She has also authored the glaucoma section of Datta Modern Ophthalmology, concise textbooks of ophthalmology and OCT at last. She is naturally a sort of a lecturer and has traveled up to abroad as well as across the country of delivering her various talks at various forums. Her leadership positions, she is a founder secretary of Indian Pediatric Glaucoma Society. She was also a former secretary of GSI. She is a co-author of Consensus Guidelines on Childhood Glaucoma. Nominated member of Glaucoma Advisory Board for FICO AIOS, in charge of academic program of, at uh, Advanced Eye Care PGI Chandigarh. And she has multiple honors, special honors to mention a few invited member of Worldwide Childhood Glaucoma Research Network. <laughs> invited member, Task Force Glaucoma, Ministry of Health and uh, Family Welfare, Government of India. And she is also a member of Task Force of Indo-US Joint Proposals, DBT, Government of India. More than 11 awards to her credit, but I would just mention the last few ones. Excellence in Glaucoma Award by Women Ophthalmological Society in December 2021. Best paper for congenital rubella syndrome at UK Pediatric Glaucoma Society annual meeting in February 2022. Best video, best posters, multiple to mention a few. So here, it's my duty, we will be playing the pearl for her. Hello, good morning. Today we'll be talking about clinical pearls to detect glaucoma. So the outline is gonna be effective screening and diagnostic tools. Why bother? There are an estimated 16 million people affected by glaucoma in India, but the problem is the majority, over 90%, are undiagnosed. Even in developed countries, it's estimated that 50% of glaucoma sufferers remain undetected. Can we change this scenario? Remember the major element of glaucoma strategy is case detection. Use the opportunity that you have to detect at least the obvious glaucomas. And who are they? The clear-cut cases with established functional loss, unfortunately, remains largely undiagnosed. And I refer you to Professor Ravi Thomas's article in the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology a couple of years ago, where he bemoaned the lack of comprehensive examination. Hello, good morning. No. Today we'll be talking about the intraocular pressure. We have the optic tendinometry grown. Tongue in cheek, but unfortunately true. So what do we have? We have the intraocular pressure. We have the optic nerve head. We have a gonioscopy. And when we suspect it, we have a visual field to confirm the diagnosis. Now that seems pretty simple. What about the pressures? The current practice is the non-contact tonometer, though it's less reliable but it's a useful screening tool for the population. 
it's prudent to check for any high IOP on Coleman Applanation Tonometry and as a caveat, do not diagnose or manage glaucoma on NCT readings. Remember, use NCT for screening and use a Goldman Applanation Tonometer to diagnose and manage the glaucoma. Why is gonioscopy important? Remember, Asians will represent 87% of those with angle closure by 2020, and that was a prediction. So they already must be. And 91% of people who are bilaterally blind from glaucoma are suffering from primary angle closure glaucoma. I put this picture here to demonstrate how easy it is to, gonios to do gonioscopy even in small children once you're friends with them. So it's not difficult at all. Um, I thank Dr. Faisal for sharing this video. And the short clip in real time will show how easy it is. You just ask the patient to look up. Gently place it in the inferior fornix. Ask the patient to look straight. And voila, you just need to switch on your slit lamp and see the angles. Instill antibiotics at the end of the 15 second procedure and you're done. Why is it important? You need to grade the angle and why? Because angle closure glaucoma is, as we've said, a major cause of blindness and it's recognized as a major problem in India. 10.3% of the population were found to have occludable angles in one study from the law. So what is an occludable angle? An occludable angle has been defined by Foster as one in which the posterior part of the trabecular meshwork is not visible for at least 180 degrees. What grading do you use? Any. As long as it's consistent, but it's more important to diagnose occludability, which is an angle which is capable of closure. But at the end of it all, the entity that we know as glaucoma is a chronic optic neuropathy. There are typical structural changes in the optic disc which are usually accompanied by or leading to corresponding functional changes in the visual field. What about the raised IOP then? It's just a causal risk factor for glaucoma. It's the only one that can be treated, but it's neither sufficient nor necessary for a glaucoma diagnosis. What are the salient things to look for in the optic disc? There are eight intrapapillary features, two aspects of the optic disc, the size and shape, two aspects of the rim, the size and shape again, three aspects of the cup, the size, the shape, and the cup to disc ratio, and the position of the central retinal vascular trunk. There are three peripapillary features to look for, optic disc hemorrhage, retinal fibrillary assessment, and the arteriolar diagnosis. Next, coming to the visual field testing, we know that the major disadvantage is that it's subjective. So, the field depends on the patient's response. It may not be universally applicable and there might be spurious results on initial testing. However, it has been demonstrated to be the single best discriminator between normal individuals and those with glaucoma. So, in a nutshell, the diagnosis of glaucoma is clinical. It requires a comprehensive eye examination, lit lamp examination, stereoscopic evaluation of the optic disc, applanation tonometry, and gonioscopy. Once you've done this and you suspect glaucoma, you need automated perimetry. It establishes the presence of functional damage and provides a baseline for follow-up and to detect progression about imaging techniques they're not essential for diagnosis but they may have a role for follow-up so what do you do it's desirable to detect cases at a stage where optic neuropathy is yet to develop where you have a reasonable certainty that if i treat this patient i would help prevent glaucoma but then that's utopian it's very difficult to do that but what is doable is diagnose glaucoma when treatment can prevent blindness in the patient's lifetime and a comprehensive eye exam is our cornerstone to achieve that goal. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Madam. Thank you once more uh, for this uh, wonderful pearl and that was the real world of wisdom, words of wisdom from the glaucoma 
doyen of our country or rather of the world thank you madam for being with us we will be interacting with you shortly before that i have to uh, announce few of my section winners so the section 4 winner is dr s sarath from delhi dr sarath congratulations do join us on a zoom platform now coming to the overall cumulative winners one is dr namita vg from kochi congratulations namita i think you are a repeater good most welcome then the other person is dr raghul nandan from pondicherry dr raghul nandan congratulations do join us on the zoom platform immediately because we are going to start the rapid fire round and the overall top of three is dr vijaya pai again she is a repeater i i hope it there is no connection between uh, madam our quiz master and the, this particular guy uh, dr vijaya please dr vijaya please do join us so now i request dr prashob and dr shailaja madam to have continue the discussion with sushmita madam till we have the other participants to play the rapid fire round on this concerned topic please good morning madam a very very nice presentation Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Madam. Do you recommend that gonioscopy be performed in all patients? Uh, no, at least the ones which have a narrow angle, uh, a narrow anterior chamber on Van Herricks. So we we ask for Van Herricks for everybody, and yes, we need gonioscopy in that. All retinal vascular diseases, you never know a lurking. You showed a new vascularization at the angle as well, but it does any high pressures, of course, would require a gonioscopy. There's no doubt. Do you recommend that all ophthalmologists know basics of? See, I'm so happy that cataract surgery is now being combined with all sorts of things like GAT and Bang and everything because everybody will have to know gonioscopy then. Everybody will have to learn to look at the angle. But of course, I mean, without gonioscopy, you, even if you have high pressures and you just give us alatan or something, and they have angle closure, you're not doing any any good actually. So, gonioscopy is part of a comprehensive eye exam. It's not a specialized. And that was real time. It does take just about fifteen seconds or ten seconds to do it, so it doesn't add on. Uh, if I may add a caveat while everybody is joining, it's one of my favorite stories of Dr. Chandrasekhar, who we all look up to as our gurus, Dr. G. C. Dr. Ravi Thomas. These are people who we looked upon as gods. And there was this this talk about maybe twenty years, fifteen years ago of um, aplanation tonometry versus shiyods. A lot of people said that you know there might be no electricity, and we are talking of the rural, and we are talking of this, that, and the other. And finally, Dr. G. C. just got up in exasperation and said, "All right, I agree to people not doing aplanation tonometry if they are doing intracapsular cataract surgery with a loop. But if you have the money and the electricity for a FACO machine and a microscope, you jolly well have money and electricity for an aplanation tonometer." So that uh, discussion ended there and then. <laughs> so, So yes, aplanation tonometry and gonioscopy, unfortunately, are thought of as very specialized investigations. And I might add that there are some corporate hospitals which charge extra for aplanation tonometry, and they charge extra for a gonioscopy, which to me is 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 crazy. I mean, that's why we are demeaning our own skills. I think it should be a part. Of it. Very pertinent point. Yeah. Okay, Shailesh, you want to ask? excellent talk madam it was really nice to listen to your uh, pearls uh, being a retinal surgeon i would just uh, like to know uh, in which patients when we when we operate we most of the times end up having these post op spikes or uh, some patients chronically need to be on anti glaucoma medications so what would your advice be uh, like when we uh, go about the surgery which patients would you uh, suggest us to be more careful and what oh, steps to oh. take Yeah, all CCRVOs, BRVOs, steroid responsiveness, POAG are all part of the same weird family of uh, diminished outflow, which is why we see a lot of open angle glaucoma in people who have CCRVO as well. And the reason probably is that the diastolic venous pressure is just about thirty, and if you have an IOP which has spikes more than that, those are the patients which land up with CCRVO, which is why thirty is a magic figure for all glaucoma trials and everything. So all vascular diseases are. are See, there's no question that the intraocular pressure has to be taken at the baseline before you do anything, whether you are retina or cornea. Because when there is a spike, the first question I would ask my resident is, "Pelle pressure kya tha? Is it related to the retinal thing, or is it that you just incidentally diagnosed a fellow who had glaucoma all along?" But vascular diseases, gases, silicon oil, and um, extensive lasers. Extensive lasers, we. 
seen causes. So that's why we don't sort of advocate doing PRP in one sitting because it does cause a lot of inflammation. And then we are in a bit of a trouble because there might be a steroid responder, but you need to give steroids in there. But those would be my take home of, of course, everybody needs it. Any ophthalmic patient deserves Goldman Applination Tonometry and Optic Disc Examination. If we did that, take that opportunity, we would we would be a lot better where glaucoma is concerned. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank Only you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so Hi, much. Nice. Nice to see you on the other side and asking questions for once. Otherwise, he's at <laughs> the receiving end. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I Thank think you. that is a wrong word, madam. She's, he's not at the receiving end. He's at the receiving end of getting all the prizes for our insight. <laughs> okay. He doesn't like to share any prizes of that's any true. cases with others. True, true. He doesn't give an opportunity. Yes. So that's my grudge against him. <laughs> it's like it's like making the naughtiest boy the monitor so that he can't do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you once more, madam. Please stay with us. We have a rapid fire round following that. We will be having a felicitation. We would expect you to stay back and felicitate sure. the uh, finalists then. Sure. Okay. I think we have uh, with us right now Dr. Nikita, who was Section 2 winner, Dr. Basit Ali, Section 3 winner, Dr. Sarat, Section 4 winner, Dr. Namita, Dr. Raghul, and Dr. Vijay Apayar, except Hitisha, who was Section 1 winner. I think we can proceed with the section uh, rapid fire round. So who is going to initiate the rapid fire round? Please get your video as well as audio input on all the participants, all the uh, rapid fire finalists. Please get it on. Yeah, welcome, welcome each one of you. It's so nice to see you, Vijay Pai, ma'am. Thank you. It's a privilege to have you at our uh, forum. Uh, seriously, I mean it. We are honored. Okay. Thank you. And Hitisha also. Uh, request once more for the last time, Dr. Hitisha, to join us on a Zoom. Uh, welcome, welcome. So she's there. I think we'll move with the section two winner. Uh, first, we will have Dr. Nikita Gupta to play the rapid fire round. And over to you, Prashob and uh, Dr. Shelja for the rapid fire round. So the first participant who is going to play is Nikita. Thank you, sir. I'll start with the first round. Dr. Yeah. Nikita. Dr. Nikita, are you here? Can you switch on your video? and? Yeah, Nikita, get your video as well as audio input on. Can you hear us? Nikita, where are you? Just wait for a while. Nikita, can you hear us? Hmm. Dr. Nikita Gupta, where is she gone? I think, yes, I, I think I think she has come then. Nikita is, I can see a video. Yeah, Nikita. Nikita, unmute yourself. Nikita. Unmute yourself. Any problems, Nikita, for you? Yes. We can't hear you. Sai, can you help? Sai, can you help her out? Okay, meanwhile, what we do is we will go ahead with section. Uh, I think we are having Hitisha. Are you ready with us, Hitisha? Hitisha? Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was, Good morning, sir. So that was, that's what. Uh, so that's say, what, she is the section where uh, so we section will, go, will, go. will play the first we'll round. Will play the first round. Dr. Prashok. Dr. Prashok. Yeah, uh, Dr. Hitisha, can yeah, you uh, switch off Hitisha, your, you, uh, are you, are you on two devices? Are you, are you on two devices? I think somebody, uh, I think somebody is switched. You can switch no, off the other. No, sir, I'm on one. I'm on one device only. No, not only you, anyone, only you, anyone. Anybody. Because there is a, 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 two devices. Because of the two devices. Just get your other video. Just get your other video. Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's still coming. The echo is still, still coming. The echo is still coming. Sai, can you help Sai, us out? Can you help us out? Sai. Hi. Hitisha, just mute yourself once. Just mute yourself once. Uh, I've spoken, uh, spoken to Dr. Nikita. She's going to log off and log in now. Okay. Yeah, but Hitisha, I think she is on the two. two uh, it, is a, it is a problem with Dr. Hitisha because okay. uh, when she it's muted it, it's your end only. Because the moment you muted, the echo is off. 
uh, all the winners i request you log off or close the browser window on which you are playing because that will echo your uh, audio the browsers if at all you are playing on uh, the same system close the browsers where you are playing in the uh, last four rounds is it okay when only on zoom screen on the other screen should be switched off is it okay hitisha can you play are you ready um is it okay sir uh, let's see let's see can you can hear me now it's still like going I've closed the. Okay, Hitesha, what you do is uh, you uh, just stop it uh, again. Uh, Relog. Uh, uh, you can join. Meanwhile, okay. we'll have the other participants. We'll have the other participants. Okay, sir. Uh, so just uh, put off your audio. Huh? Basitali. Doctor Basitali, are you there with us? Yeah. Get your audio on. Yes, sir. Audible. Yeah. Great. Yes. So, yes. Ashok, you can go ahead with first uh, with him. Yeah, Dr. Basitali, uh, yes. congratulations. Uh, you. Can you introduce yourself shortly? I'm Dr. Basitali. I've done my post-graduation from Arvind Pondicherry. Recently, I'm pursuing my fellowship in Shroff Charity Eye Hospital, Delhi. Great. Great that we have winners from all corners of the country. And uh, we're going to uh, start the rapid-fire section. Uh, so, can you see my screen? Yes. Remember, there are 30 seconds only for you. You have to answer the maximum of questions. If you delve upon one particular question, you will miss upon it. Please do uh, repeat the rules, Prashop. Yeah. yeah, the rules are that you have 30 seconds for five questions. The first answer that you give is considered valid. And if at the, if, if at the end of the last question, the time, is, uh, time ends, you still have three more seconds to answer if you're attempting it. And please note that the, the scoring is plus 10 for the right answer and minus five. Or the wrong answer. There's a negative mark. So be careful. All right. Are we ready, Basan? Yes, sir. So we'll go ahead with the questions for the first round. Time starts now. How many cones does the human retina contain? Uh, 1.3 billion. Diagnose this from the picture. No cardia, keratitis. What is being imaged here? Pass. Which new drug was investigated in the Duresta study? Pass. Which invention is this related? Time. Up. Pass. Hmm. I think you have answered two questions. Hmm. Let us see if you are right. How many cones does the human retina contain? It's 6 million cones. You got that wrong. So minus five for that. Diagnose this correctly. It is no cardiac keratitis. The characteristic uh, reed shape pattern, pinhead like infiltrates, and the FP staining. You can see that. And you did pass this question. It was the confocal microscopy of corneal, corneal nerves that was being shown here. The new drug is dimetaprost intracameral implant that was investigated in the Durista study. And this is the cryolate that Jose Baraka used to perform keratomeleusis before LASIK was invented. So uh, I think Dr. Basit has got one right and one wrong. You get plus five. Okay. Thank you, sir. Now we have the second. Uh, who, Nikita, has Nikita has joined. Nikita, are you there with us? Nikita? Yes, sir. Can okay, you see? Good. Yes, yes. Yes, so Nikita. Over to you, uh, Prashob. Yes, Nikita, can you introduce yourself in a short manner? Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Nikita, uh, doing MCS with your and PGI Chandigarh currently in my third year. Great. So you are Uday's colleague. <laughs> uh, are you sure? uh, no, he did uh, pass on a few of the questions, Uday. Okay, over to you. I <laughs> wish so he had. <laughs> okay. or, or he took help or her in creating the questions. We'll see about that in the next talk. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Okay, best of luck. All the best, Nikita. 
to your questions. Remember, 30 seconds, five questions, plus 10 for the right answer, minus five for the wrong. And you get three seconds more at the end if you attempt the last question. Okay? If you don't know the answer, say pass. Here we go. Pira is composed predominantly of type dash collagen. What type of collagen? Uh, pass. Diagnose this from the picture. Pass. Name this investigation. I Iridogram. Name the DRCR study which compared Bevacizumab, Ranibizumab, and Aflibosepam. Uh, uh, protocol T. Which invention is this an early form of? The time is nearly up. Three seconds. Uh, type 1 collagen is clear, I think. I would like to try uh, to come out. Okay, I'll accept that answer. Let's move to the answers. So you are correct. That's type 1 collagen. It's clear as composed of type 1 collagen. Get 10 points for that. This is a post-lastic patient with diffuse lamellar keratitis. You did not answer that. This You said iridogram. This is actually an arterial segment fluorescein angiogram. Uh, I, I cannot give you the answer. I mean, give you the marks for that. Minus 5. Uh, the DRCR study, you got it correct. It is a protocol T. Get 10 points for that. And you did not answer this question. It was Kelman's earliest fake emulsification machine. Uh, Prashop, sir, for the first question, she, she said pass. So no, uh, she, I, she, I think she answered at the end. In the end, she we'll answered type, type 1. Fine. So you can, you can give her. Marks. No, she scored 10 marks. Yes, 10 for that. Uh, and uh, 10 for protocol T. Minus 5 for anti segment. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. So, so now... Now, Thank you, Nikita. You played well. Now we have Thank the third uh, person to play. Dr. Hitisha, are you there with us now? Uh, are you there with us now? Uh, yes, sir. Is it okay now? Yeah, good. I think hey. you, know, you can carry hey. forward. I can still hear the echo. Yeah, yeah, there, the echo. yeah then there is an echo better. I think we can continue. Let's say. Let's say. Uh, should we continue like this? Continue like this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, Tisha, can you hey, introduce Tisha. yourself? Can you introduce yourself? Uh, good morning, sir. My name is Tisha. I'm second year junior resident in PGI Chandigarh. You've got Chandigarh all over the place. Chandigarh all over the place. There is the culprit. There is the culprit. Anyway, let's find out. Anyway, let's find out. Okay, so we'll move to your questions. Again, th 30 okay. seconds, five questions, questions. plus five 10 five. for the right answer, plus minus five, five for the wrong answer. Five for the wrong answer. And, your, okay, and your starts now. Starts now. Time taken for corneal epithelial cell turnover is? Turnover is. Um, uh, seven days. Like, like. Um, pass. What does this image show? This image show? Um, uh, sir, pass. RHNGF is used in the treatment of pass. And this image represents the first published description of which procedure? Uh, quicket procedure. Can you repeat the answer? Repeat the answer. Um, oh, no, pass, sir. I don't know. You passed it. Pass yes, Mute yourself now, Nikita. Go away. She passed that. I did not hear that. Yeah, she passed it. Prashok. She passed it. Okay. Yeah. So I think she answered only one question. That yeah. is wrong. Answer. And that is the wrong one. Uh, it is 14 days, two weeks. Get minus five for that. This is a wheel Marchesani syndrome. You can see microsphere of fakia, dislocated, anteriorly dislocated uh, uh, the spine lens with short stubby fingers. And this is an ASO OCT showing an inverted ICL that was placed. RHNGF is nothing but the incompetent human nerve growth factor, growth factor or synergermic, which was recently FDA approved for treatment of neurotrophic keratitis. And this was the uh, initial uh, images published by Keynes 
regarding trabeculectomy from his original paper. So I think you got one answer that is wrong. That is minus five. Okay. So now uh, we will invite Dr. S. Sarath, who was the section four winner. He is from Delhi. Dr. Sarath, can you unmute yourself as well as get your video on? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Hello. Okay, Hello. Hello. Hello, Sharad. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Please introduce yourself. Uh, sir, I'm doing my senior residency in cornea cataract and refractive services at RP Center. Very good. Got a cornea representation here. So I will move to the questions for you. Let's see yes, how sir. in the rapid fire. Ready? 30 seconds. Five yes, questions sir. plus 10 minus five. So here we go. The coronal fissure closes by which week of gestation? Third week. Diagnose this from this image. Pass. Third Diagnose week. from this image. Third. Scan. Cube. Choroidal. Sorry, uh, pass. Ciliary body Pancakes. trauma. Okay. Five seconds. Pass. Sir, uh, depicts the point of the first performance of which surgery. Three seconds left. Um, cataract surgery. Got the right answer. Let's move to the answers. You said third week. That is not the right answer. It is seventh week. A minus five for that. A, it's the right superior oblique palsy that you can get to diagnose from the picture. Do not answer it, you pass that. Okay. This question, I think you passed again. Yes. Marks for you. Your coronal effusion. Cares, you should be knowing this. Make up status invention. Yes. Corneal allogenic intrastromal ring segments. And you pass that as well. And this is the first, one of the first performances of penetrating cataplasty by Edward Zorn. Okay. So uh, you said cataract surgery. That is not the right answer. You get minus five for that. So two wrong answers and minus 10 total. Well, Dr. Sarath, well played. Now it's turn for us to invite the next uh, for the rapid fire. Dr. Namita. Dr. Namita. Dr. Namita, are you there with us? Please unmute. And I request Dr. Shailja to carry forward the rap rapid fire round. Yes, I'll just share my screen. Please. Namita, meanwhile, you can introduce yourself in two sentences. Yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. I'm Dr. Namita, doing anti segment fellow in uh, Girizar Eye Hospital, Kuchin. From which place? Kuchin, Girizar Eye Hospital. Okay, okay, good, good. Okay, Dr. Namita, can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, all the best. And you're familiar with the rules, right? You have to yes. say pass if you don't know the answer. You get 30 seconds plus 10 and minus 5 for the wrong answer. Okay, all the best. We'll start. What is the major constituent of vitreous humor? Uh, hyaluronic acid and type 2 collagen. Diagnose this. Uh, gyrate atrophy. Name this OC sign. Pass. Name the study which completed Avastin, Ranibizumab, and Aflibercept in the treatment of AMD. Cat. Who mm -hmm. invented the indirect ophthalmoscope? Pass. Okay, let's go to the answers. So the first one is what is the major constituent? So you got that wrong. That is minus five. Diagnosis of this is gyrate atrophy. You got it right. So plus 10 there. This OCT sign is rain cloud sign seen in candida endogenous of endophthalmitis that you did not attempt. At file, you said it right. So plus 10 there. And the last one is Charles Giffens invented the indirect ophthalmoscope. So that you did not attempt. So I think she got one wrong and she got two right. So that is like 15 marks, right? 
well played nandita now you can uh, unmute your uh, mute yourself and uh, we have the next participant uh, person to play is dr ragul uh, ragul nadan from pondicherry please uh hello dr ragu congratulations uh, Thank you, please introduce yourself uh, ma'am i'm dr ragul nadan i did my uh, post graduation from uh, pgi chandigarh and uh, i am preparing for my uh, sr exams okay so we'll start the next uh, rapid fire round with you uh, all sure. the best sure strongest attachment of the vitreous is at dash at uh, ora serata Diagnose this. Coronal rupture. Name this OC appearance. Pass. Expand cut. Uh, steroid corneal uh, treat uh, ulcer treatment step trial. The first person to use PFCL in the treatment Chang. of RD. Chang. And uh, the OCT is uh, uh, multiple. Uh, it is uh, seen in lymphoma. Okay. Uh, Tiger. Okay. Uh, leopard. Leopard sign. No, no, no. Okay, let's uh, see the answers. The strongest attachment of vitreous is at vitreous base. You said ora serrata. We'll give you that. Uh, this is right. Choroidal rupture with subretinal hemorrhage uh, seen in trauma. The OCT appearance is that of a sawtooth appearance seen in cuticular drusen. Even the FFA picture of that starry sky appearance. And Scott said said that right steroids for corneal ulcers trial. And the last one is the said Chang. It's Stanley Chang. So I think you got one, two, three, and four right and one wrong. So that is one was passed. We will take I the think... first answer. He said yeah. pass initially. Which one, ma'am? Uh, the Aduna, I said pass. Third, yeah. Oh, third one, yeah. First he said pass. Then in the end he answered. Okay. So that we will take as pass. Okay, yes, we'll take it as pass. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, well played, Raghunandan. And now Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Finalist is going yes, to be Dr. Vijaya Pai from... Uh, ma'am, what's this? So, Are I think I will to... introduce madam. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to quiz her? <laughs> yeah, right, madam has sat through uh, my quizzes. She has seen me quizzing the PGs, so she know, <laughs> knows no, what that's I why I was just, I'm wondering if madam should quiz you or you should quiz the ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please. Congratulations, go. madam. I was uh, expecting you will come through. <laughs> Thank you, because it's the first time this session I'm attending. Okay, okay. Uh, so, madam, you'll introduce yourself, ma'am. Yeah, you can um, introduce. I think, uh, no, no, that is not fair, Shailja. You have to introduce, ma'am. Sure, sure, sure. Madam is a senior professor and uh, glaucoma and pediatric uh, ophthalmology consultant at Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. She has been a teacher to most of us in Manipal. So I have worked in Madam's unit for almost uh, seven years and now I'm in a different unit, but we are in the same department. So uh, with that introduction, I think uh, we'll move on to the round. All the best, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. The layer of large choroidal vessels is called? Halus. Diagnose this. Choroidal folds. Identify this. The OCTA with the CNVM. In the DRCR trial, which compared ranibizumab and PRP in PDR. Pass. This picture is dash view. Uh, Miyake, Apple Miyake view. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, My so uh, I think uh, we'll see the answers. The first one, Haller's layer, that Adam got right. Choroidal folds is also right. This is a picture of CNVM type 2, but uh, uh, that's the right answer. And the protocol, yes, is the one which compared the ranibizumab and PRP in PDR. And the last one is the posterior view, that is the Miyake apple view. So, madam got four right and one pass. My goodness. Ma'am, seriously, I should salute you. I should salute you. All were retinal questions and uh, what Shailja, you said, she is a pediatric ophthalmologist. <laughs> I learned I learned retina from Shailaja. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll no, you, Madam, Madam, for your see, Madam knows that. most of my questions in the class and what I ask for the PGs. We have been there for past 10 years together. 
I, I really salute her enthusiasm, her zeal to per perform as well and excel. Rather, uh, it's an eye opener to people like us who are lazing. And uh, we, you know, I always say, whenever it comes to study, our aaj thak gaya jada. I need to. I am really inspired, madam. I really am inspired to study again. Thank once you. More, okay. Thank you, madam. Once more, now we can everyone, all the participants, all the guests, please unmute yourself and get your videos on. Uh, we can have a small chat till we have the final scores with us. Yes. Sushmita, madam, are you there with us? Yes, sure. Madam, I... another professor. Look at the participation of Vijay, madam. What do you uh, say? Amazing, amazing, uh, ma'am. <laughs> it was good you. fun. <laughs> I really loved it. Seriously, I would never love have come in uh, ahead of people to get myself quiz because I know I would be just. Uh, <laughs> my whole ego would be smashed. Uh, so salute to you, ma'am. And so young girls and young guys who were participating with us, this is the spirit. This is the zeal. It's not about quizzing. It is not about playing. You should always be a learner throughout your life. This is what today's episode taught us all. Seriously, this is the only thing which I learned from the whole episode that learning never stops. You have to keep on. And as long as you are inquisitive, as long as you are ready to be a student, you are you you are still alive. The moment you say I know enough, that is the last day of your life. If I say put it right, uh, what, what do you say, Sushmita Ma'am? Some few words. No, no, absolutely. I uh, Raghul was with us till very shortly, and I think he'll be back. So I keep telling them that what I am teaching you today is nothing of what I read twenty years ago. So we learn every day, and we question and question all the time. That's true. Every day is why not? So Namita, what did you learn from ma'am? Namita, basically all young girls, Hitisha, Nikita. Hitisha is doing her thesis in glaucoma. So did madam give you all complex? <laughs> I'm asking them the very unophthalmic question. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to see all of them. Okay, okay, good, great. Did you know, so, Raghul, did you do? No, Raghul did his thesis in cornea, isn't it? You, you were. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Ma ma cornea? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm interested in retina. No, no. what do you do no, your thesis so. in? I'm just wondering. <laughs> My thesis was on uh, OCT and papillary. Ah, okay. Okay, Sorry. great, great. Hello. So, uh, friends, we are ready with the results. Our back end uh, team is ready with the results. And it's not uh, surprising, rather, I think we are the uh, finalists for first five. I would go from the descending, uh, ascending order. So on number five is Dr. Baisatali. So from Gujarat, congratulations to you. And I request Dr. Uh, Mr. Sai to hand over, uh, give the voucher. And I request Uday to do the honors for that. Uh, Sai, can you get the gift voucher? Virtually, we need to hand over. Just a minute, doctor. Yeah, one minute. So you can ask few questions to him beyond ophthalmology, doctor. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Basavani, you mentioned you're in Shroff, right? Yeah. So what is your specialty currently in your country? Recently, recently I'm uh, doing my pursuing my fellowship in phaco cornea and refractive. Okay, okay. And, and yes, you're yes, originally from where? I'm uh, my native is from uh, Gujarat, Bhavnagar. Okay. So from all the from Gujarat to Delhi. Yeah, initially I was in Pondicherry only. Then I came to Delhi. Good to see people like us traveling all over India. <laughs> but yeah. congratulations, very well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very well played, uh, Dr. Basatali. I am really impressed by the way you played. And Uday today was the star of the day. You know, you really conducted the quiz. So Thank you, you were in fact uh, matching both Shelja as well as Prashob. Yeah, in great honor, sir. Thank you. Sir. This is great. my first ever experience on the other side, and I was I'm grateful to you, to no, Shilpi no, ma'am, to no, Brain no, Teaser. No. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Sai, are we ready with the voucher? Hello, Sai. Doctor, one minute. One minute. Okay. Share your screen.
So uh, what do you think? Who must be the finalist? Any guesses from anyone? Who was who, who gets a uh, box away today as a uh, first? Ma'am. Any guesses? Vijay ma'am. Vijay ma'am. Vijay ma'am has a huge chance here. Yeah. Okay. Other guys, Nikita, bolo. The baki log bolo, bhai. What do you say? Namita. Any guesses? Uh, Nikita, we can't hear you. You're muted. You can unmute yourself for a while. Ma'am or Raghul. Ma'am or Raghul. ओके लखानी जी आपको क्या लगता है मैम ओनली विन ओके नीतिशा सर क्लोज कॉल बिटवीन रघुल सर एंड मैम ओके चलो लेट्स सी कीप योर फिंगर्स क्रॉस्ड वी विल कम टू इट इन अ वेरी शॉर्ट वाइल वेयर आर यू सही आर यू नॉट रेडी टुडे i think uh, people we should uh, we, we should congratulate uh, you sir for this this is i never knew so much of effort goes behind this lot of work and very very nicely planned with all the rehearsals everything i am amazed because when i do quiz i always have some last minute hiccups one tie breaker is not ready one prize is not ready i am running all over the place but this was very very smooth sir so does it every month That, I know, I know. Doctor Shilpi and Doctor Prashant, I think, I, I think that's off to you conducting this. Basically, after months, effort. I am a. Uh, I sit upon our uh, laurel, laurels, I should say, being a, a <laughs> director of the place. Should I put it the other way? In fact, Sai, what happened? Are you ready, or shall we proceed? Sai, yeah, I think yeah. So the gift voucher for you. yeah so number 5 so basit ali this is your gift voucher and i request dr uday to do the honors and congratulate congratulations to the basit ali thank you for comments how is coming now the on number 4 is dr nikita gupta and i would request dr shailja madam to do the honors congratulations dr nikita and uh, all the best I, i think you, this is uh, second or third time you are winning right i have seen you last uh, one or two episodes correct. also correct correct yeah yeah <laughs> so hopefully next year she will be conducting the quiz as well yeah of course we are looking forward to such good brains you know congratulations thank you thank you so much ma'am good congratulations nikita now the third runner up uh, or I, i should say second runner up is dr namita veji and i would request prashob to do the honors yes congratulations dr namita thank you sir thank you well done i think you are becoming a chronic winner uh, i am <laughs> seeing your name every now and then keep up the good work thank and you sir. spend the money well i'll send you my <laughs> sure. phone number sure sure <laughs> so now the first runner up today was dr rakul dr rakul and so i request dr Shailja and Prashob to do the honors together. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And uh, I think you held your own against a stalwart <laughs> whose name will be shortly announced. But well done. Congratulations, Raghul Nandan. Very Thank good. You so well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And the finalist or the uh, person who wins today. is none other than dr vijay pai and dr sushmita kaushik can only match to do the honors so i request dr sushmita madam to uh, hand over the voucher to dr vijay pai my privilege and congratulations madam it was such a treat and the way you answered in you know two seconds flat is amazing congratulations and thank you for inspiring so many of us all the time thank you thank you thank you madam once more so friends we had a great session a great learning and dr vijay pai you were the icing on the cake for today's show in fact this such episodes such small episodes make us inspired to do more to conduct it in a better way and learn from you and today what i learned is that teach learning never dies you have to keep on being inquisitive and you have rather rather as a role model personified it for the teaching what we tell our student that yeah you have to uh, learn throughout your life thank you once more everyone dr sushmita madam for sparing your valuable time and on a sunday 
for a effort called brain teasers. Uh, and for this young blood, especially because most of the people who attend our quizzes are younger generations of ophthalmologists who are studying or general ophthalmologists and finding time and giving such a wonderful nutshell in nutshell about the diagnostic part of glaucoma. Thank you once more as a brain teaser team. Thank and you. Of course, one request, one request yes. Dr. Baumkule. Yes. Uh, can the non-participant watch your quiz on the YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone, anyone can watch. Is there a link like that? Yes, yes. I will share with you, ma'am. Ah, okay. No, no. Live? Uh, uh, Sai, can we? Uh, doctor, actually, it is on live. It's oh. on live. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, thank you once more, madam. And uh, last but not the least, Dr. Uday, Dr. Shailja, and Dr. Prashob for doing all the spade work. Today's all the questions and everything has been formatted. As I said, I'm sitting duck on this people's groundwork effort. And also, of course, to Dr. Shilpi. And once more, Sai for seamlessly conducting today's show. And of course, to the Microvision team for being steadfastly with us. So it's time for us to say goodbye, friends, of this for this season three. We'll be shortly back from July with All India Postgraduate Quiz in a bigger way. It would be that season would last for about three months where we'll be having various intercollegiate quizzes and then we will have the finalists, zonals, and then the final rounds. So, looking forward to meet you on the next platform in a, a new season. That will be season four for the second time in the world, we, uh, second time in our country, we'll be doing All India Postgraduate Quiz from the month of July. So, once more, thank you. Bye uh, bye bye and take care. And stay safe. Have a great time. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. It was a pleasure. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, thank you madam. Sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.